Hello fellow coffee botherers, in this short video I'm going to be talking about and demonstrating back flushing the Gadget Classic Pro. I'm doing this with the Gadget Classic Pro, but this will work on all espresso machines that have a solenoid valve. Don't do this with the Gadget Classic 2015, by the way, as this doesn't have a three-way solenoid valve. Some machines have brew valves instead of solenoid valves, and you'll usually know this by the fact that they don't come with a back flushing disc. If your machine doesn't have a solenoid, keep watching as I'm going to show you what to do instead of back flushing if you do have the Gezer Classic 2015 or any other machine without a solenoid. If it has a solenoid, it should have come with a back flush disc to blank off the porter filter. If it didn't come with one of these, as will be the case with most cheaper domestic machines like the Amazon Basic, Swan Retro, Swan Nordic, the Longi Dedica, Grand Gaja, Gaja Viva, the Gadget Classic 2015, and so on, that it won't have a solenoid valve. Another way to check is to look if there's any kind of pipe coming from inside the machine into the drip tray, because if it has a solenoid valve, there will be an exit from the solenoid into the drip tray. And if you take the drip tray lid off, after each shot, you should see some mucky water entering the drip tray via this exit, if there's a solenoid valve. Also, if you consult your manual, if it has a solenoid, there'll be something in there about back flushing. If you have a machine like this that can't be back flushed, don't worry about it. It's not so much that you can't back flush it, it's that you don't need to. The main value of back flushing is to keep the solenoid clean. So if it doesn't have a solenoid valve, you don't need to worry about keeping it clean. The Sage or Breville Bambino doesn't have a solenoid, by the way, so you can't back flush that or you don't need to back flush that. The Bambino Plus does, but I've done a specific video on back flushing the Bambino Plus. This one shows you how to get into the cleaning cycle and do a machine-led back flush when prompted. And this one shows you how to do manual back flushing with the Bambino Plus. As I said, I'll talk you through cleaning a non-solenoid espresso machine though. So keep watching even if you do have the classic 2015 or any other solenoid free machine. So first of all, what is back flushing and why do we need to do it? Back flushing is where we blank off the porter filter, causing the water, either just water or water mixed with detergent, to flush back up through the group, cleaning the inside of the group, the solenoid valve and the brew path. The reason back flushing is important if you have a machine with a solenoid valve is that coffee oils will build up over time and will gunk up the solenoid valve if you don't keep it clean with occasional back flushing with detergent. Back flushing also keeps the brew path or brew circuit cleaned and the group, although personally I don't think back flushing is all that important for this. You can keep the shower head clean by cleaning it and every time you pull water through the group you're cleaning it, but the solenoid and the exit into the drip tray needs back flushing in order to keep it clean. I've just mentioned back flushing with and without detergent, so just to explain that. Water only back flushing is something that helps to keep the group clean. I don't think it can do any harm whether you do this just daily as some people do, or weekly, or even after every shot as some people do, or just every time you realise you've not done one for a while like I tend to do. I also don't think water only back flushing is all that effective really where it matters for cleaning the coffee oils from the solenoid valve which is why I think you should do periodic detergent back flushing but I wouldn't recommend doing daily or weekly detergent back flushing with domestic machines simply because detergent causes wear on gaskets and so on and dries up parts that need to stay lubricated particularly with E61 groups so really we want to do it as infrequently as possible. How often you should back flush with detergent, I think just depends on how often you use your machine and there are loads of opinions on this. Personally, I think a back flush with detergent every two to three months is probably fine for most people if you pull in between two to four shots a day. If you wanna do it more often than that, I don't think that's a problem as long as you keep up with lubrication if you've got an E61 machine. And with machines like the Gadget Classic Pro, just keep an eye on the gaskets as in theory, excessive detergent back flushing can decrease the lifespan. Personally, I've never back flushed domestic machines with detergent more frequently than every two or three months, and I've never had an issue with any of my espresso machines. This is for domestic machines, by the way. If you've got a commercial espresso machine, you need to check with your supplier and make sure you're following their regular cleaning and maintenance instructions. So let's clean stuff. So I'm gonna do the detergent back flush first, and I'm using Pulicaf or Polycaf, I'm never quite sure how to pronounce it, but you can use uh, Kefisa, Yonex Kefisa. Uh, there's other cleaning powders that you can use. If you've got the uh, Sage or Breville machines, just keep in mind that they supply branded cleaning tablets and the manufacturer says that they've 
manufactured them cleaning tablets or they've chosen them specifically because they cause less wear on the gasketry of their machines, their domestic machines, than using something that is made for commercial machines. Pulikaf and Kafisa are made more for commercial machines and their stance on it is that their tablets are made to reduce the wear on the gaskets and so on inside over time and that's why they say they want you to use their tablets not just because they want you to buy their products so that is what they say personally as i've said in other videos i don't think it's worth the slight saving if you're doing this every two or three months you're going to save pennies or pounds over the you know the, the span of a few years it's just i think i worked out that if you do it once a month you're going to save 14 quid over two years something like that i just don't think it's uh, it's worth the risk but using gadget machines and other machines i would usually use Pulicaf or polycaf however you're supposed to pronounce it so i've got detergent i've got a group head cleaning brush and you'll see why i've got that in a minute and we've got the uh, blind disc the back flush disc and if you've got the uh, Sage or Breville machines, they have plastic uh, back flush discs rather than the metal blanket discs. And a little trick, if you find you can't get your basket out, just use your blind disc, surprise it like that. And if you're using the powder, the scientific measure of approximately a bit, so about that much, that's about five grams. Usually, I think well, three to five grams or a bit, or about a teaspoon. So, all I'm going to do is lock this in and pull five short shots. You don't need to leave the pump going for ages, you only need the pump to engage just for it to build up enough pressure so that it flushes. So, three to five seconds each time. The first one, um, sorry, three to five seconds, and then leave a gap before you do the next one. The first time I do it, I'll leave a gap of about 30. 40 seconds or so, maybe a bit longer, just to dissolve the powder. And then after that, I'll leave a gap each in between each shot of about five, 10 seconds. And then chuck that out, give it a wash, do it all again, just with water, just to rinse everything out, and then we're done. So I will demonstrate. You saw the detergent coming out of the exit from the solenoid into the drip tray. And I'm leaving it now. I'm leaving this after the first one, just leaving it to dissolve. Just give it 30 seconds or so. And then we'll do four more with shorter gaps in between. There we go, done, that's the detergent part. And as you saw, I only needed to leave it for two or three seconds each time. You can just hear it start to strain. Once you hear that, that sort of strain kick in, just, just stop, stop the shot. There you go, we've dissolved everything. We've just got water in there now. So now, just do that. Just to, Properly rinse out the blind disc, and then I'm going to do that again. So just five short shots, just rinsing it all out now. All rinsed. I'm just going to give the shower screen a clean. Just give it a brush. 
and I'm using a group head brush like this so I don't burn my hands while I'm doing it. So just I'm gonna flow water through the group and just give it a brush. And then just give it a good brush all around while I'm at it. Give it a nice good scrub. Sorted. So that's a detergent back flush. A water only back flush is literally the same, but just with no detergent. So you just put the blind disc in, lock the porter filter, and just pull five short shots. Like that, and then you don't need to do the rinsing phase because it is rinsing because you've got no uh, detergent in there. So, and as I've said, the water only back flushing, do as often as you like. I don't think you'll cause any damage to the pump by doing that regularly as long as you're not leaving it straining for too long. Just stop it as soon as you hear that strain kicking in. I would just do the detergent back flushing as I've said, every two or three months for normal use on domestic machines. So that is how to back flush a machine with a solenoid. I'm now gonna talk through how to do an alternative clean, group clean, on the 2015 or any other espresso machine that doesn't have a solenoid valve. I've still got pulley or pulicaf, whatever you call it, and I've dissolved a bit, again, scientific term, in hot water. And if we look at the shower screen, I've deliberately left this one dirty. So this doesn't have a solenoid, three-way solenoid, and any machines that don't have three-way solenoids, as I've said, obviously you don't need to worry about cleaning the solenoid because there isn't one. So, all you need to worry about keeping clean is the brew circuit, the brew path, and the group, the um, shower screen. The brew circuit, the brew path, is getting flushed every time you flush water through it. You know, water is coming this way. And the uh, group, the actual shower screen itself will get gunked up over time. It will get a bit dirty. So really all you need to do is make sure you're keeping the shower screen and the group in general clean. What we'll do, we'll dip a cloth in the solution of hot water with detergent and then we'll just give the shower screen a wipe. Get it really wet with the uh, detergent. You can see it's already it's already clean. All right, it probably wasn't all that dirty, to be fair, but it's already clean. But what we can now do is flush and give it a brush. Brush all around the group. Maybe give it another clean with the solution. Another wipe, a bit of rinse. If you're doing that fairly regularly, you're gonna keep the shower screen nice and clean. But I'll show you what to do. If you want to be a little bit more thorough, and you don't need to do this frequently, you can make, again, you can do this maybe the same kind of frequency as doing a detergent back flush, and that is take the shower screen off and actually immerse it in detergent. So for that, you need a very rare and difficult tool to find called a screwdriver. Drip try out the way. That worked. And you can see on the other side, it is a bit dirty. So, we can plonk that in there. Just don't lose your uh, screw. So we can leave that in there for a bit to clean. It's 10, 15 minutes. Should be fine, but while you're doing that, you may as well 
put your basket in there as well. And if your porter filter's a bit dirty, you could stick that in there as well. Try, that worked perfectly, try uh, to not get the plastic bit in, just, just the metal. And if you've got a porter filter that's got plastic inside, probably don't put them in here because I don't think the detergent is particularly good for plastic in the long run. So only do this if you've got a metal only porter filter. And we'll just keep the handle out. If you've got a machine with a steam tip, obviously this hasn't, this has got um, the Panarello, but if you had a machine that had a steam tip, like the Classic Pro does, you could just plonk that in there as well. Leave it all in there for 10, 15 minutes, put it all back, give it all a rinse, and there you go. So there you go, you now know how to back flush your espresso machine if it has a solenoid valve and an alternative method for cleaning your espresso machine if it doesn't. Thank you very much for watching and if you've liked this video then why not click here to watch another one. Also please click the like button, thanks. Not clicking the like button is bad luck, so they say. I don't know who they are and why they're saying anything about clicking the like button, but just in case they're important and just in case they're right, click the like button anyway. Thanks. And don't forget to become an official coffee botherer. You need to click this image around here somewhere of my face to subscribe. Tatty bye.